Hello, everyone. My name is Saad Osmani. I'm the chief of the Plasma Cell Disorders Program at the Levine Cancer Institute in Charlotte, North Carolina. And on behalf of uh, the CANDER study team, I'm going to be presenting an update um, on the phase three trial CANDER, which compared carfilzomib, dexamethasone, and daratumumab to carfilzomib, dexamethasone in relapse refractory multiple myeloma patients. And just to remind our um, um, audience about the study design. This, this is a study that looked at patients who were in the one to three prior lines of treatment. Um, and this was a two to one randomization uh, of 466 patients. Uh, so for every one patient randomized to KD arm, uh, two uh, were randomized to the KD data arm. Um, the primary endpoint was PFS. The secondary endpoints were overall survival, overall response rate, as well as safety. And this um, slide shows the patient characteristics. Um, the thing that I do want to highlight uh, from, from this slide um, is the number of uh, patients who had um, one prior line of treatment were roughly 46% um, in the study, um, and 54% of the patients had two or more prior lines of treatment. Uh, prior therapies included bortezomib in um, 90% of the patients across the two arms of the study, um, and about um, uh, 40 uh, plus percent um, in um, uh, you know, uh, exposure with lanalidomide. Uh, refractoriness to bortezomib was seen in about a third of the patients, and, and so was the refractoriness to lanalidomide um, in the study patient population. Um, at um, a median follow-up um, of about 28 months on the study, uh, we are reporting the median PFS being reached for the KD data arm at 28.6 months compared to 15.2 months on the KD arm with a hazard ratio of 0 0.59. Um, this um, confirms the original um, uh, data that were presented uh, last year at ASH. So we're seeing 41% reduction in the risk of progression and death and a 13.4 month improvement in median PFS with the three drug combination compared to the two drug combination. If we break this down into the pre-specified subgroups, we find um, that um, you know, the, the a benefit of KD data is consistent um, um, in terms of um, um, uh, randomized patients by ISS staging with most of the benefit coming from original ISS, ISS staging of one and two. Uh, high risk as well as standard risk patients, uh, as well as the ones with the unknown um, uh, risk group benefited uh, from addition of data to the KD backbone on the standard of care. Looking at uh, prior therapy exposure, what was encouraging to see is prior lenalidomide exposure and prior, uh, prior lenalidomide refractory patients uh, had similar benefit uh, as the overall patient population with over 28 months of uh, PFS benefit being seen in the Len refractory patient. And this is clinically quite meaningful. Uh, even though the patient number is small, if we break this down uh, by one prior line of treatment versus two or more prior line of treatement, uh, the same uh, consistency is seen in, in the data uh, with patients uh, with Len exposure, Len refractoriness benefiting uh, from the KD data combination. So in conclusion, with approximately 11 months of additional follow-up and uh, a 13.4 month improvement in PFS was seen uh, in patients treated with KD data versus patients treated with KD. The results from the subgroup analysis, um, including those by prior treatments were consistent uh, with that benefit seen with the KD data and compared to the overall candor population. Safety appeared to be consistent with previous report as well. Um, and uh, KD data continues to show a favorable benefit risk profile and represent an efficacious treatment option for patients with relapse refractory multiple myeloma. Thank you.